Hey guys, welcome to Tyron Hill. Welcome to the place where we empower the high vibers. I hope all is well. Luck here. Uh, welcome to your full moon and Scorpio reading. All right, let's get into it. I come to you, only God, thank you for your divine guidance, providing messages of divine light, divine love, and according to the divine will. What is it that we need to know? So, the format will be Oracle deck, a snapshot of the love, a snapshot of the career, and then the actual soul path reading when it comes to this full moon energy what we need to learn from it um what can we expect so on and so forth all right let's go all right oracle portion <laughs> we have take risks coming through all right <clears throat> and nature Okay, what I'm getting here is gathering up the courage. Gathering up the courage to take a risk. Now, this risk, it might feel like it's something out of the ordinary, but it's really you gathering up yourself is what I'm getting. It's something that is very natural for you, but for some reason, it's something that's very natural to you, but foreign at the same time, because it's a certain part of you that you haven't expressed. It's something like that. So for you to show up, or for you to express the specific side of you, it does feel like it is, it feels risky to present this or to express this for some reason. But it is you. But it feels foreign. Some of you guys, because you're not used to expressing whatever this is, it does feel like, oh, I'm being so wacky. It's so out of character. And it's like, no, you're just being you. You're just breaking free is what I'm hearing. Wow. You're just breaking free. All right. Godly. We have the revolutionary coming through here at the bottom of the deck. What has been coming up a lot in these readings has been this energy of like uh, having this revolutionary moment in your life where you kind of just flip things around and you do you or you be you. You become more of an authentic version of yourself. And we keep doing that. We keep purging. We keep breaking down walls. We keep rebirthing. We keep, you know, having ego deaths and birthing into new ego, so on and so forth. But this one feels like a biggie. This one feels like a big one. This revolutionizing moment, revolutionizing your life. All right, cool. Anything else? Get curious. Okay. All right. So, guys, here's what's happening here. Um, because it's something that we're being led to do that feels risky. And it's just like, it feels like a flighty out of the character, out of the ordinary behavior or interest or whatever the case is. It's leading you closer to you. It's like your higher self directing you closer to your authentic self. But your current ego is not a, not aligned with it. It doesn't resonate with it. So the more you stretch, the more you reach, the more you break out of this, the more you follow the breadcrumbs, the curiosity breadcrumbs, and it takes you to whatever this other point is, you're going to see that you become a different person because you're jumping out of this old ego. But it's not you stepping out of the ordinary and doing something wild. That's what it feels like. I feel like I feel the need to keep reiterating like this is you. This is not you acting out. Okay. It's feeling free. All right. Wow. That is deep. That is deep. Okay. All right. Let's go. All right. So we're going to do a snapshot in love. Let's see how this applies to love. Wait, how does this apply to love? What the hell? All right, let's see. It's given into your nature. <laughs> given into your nature. Okay. What's going on with the love? Okay, so we got the Six of Pentacles coming through. Page of Wands and a Nine of Cups. Mm. Some of us, whether we're in something or not, there might have been a history here of going with the safe bet. 
okay something that is safe something that feels secure um but it's not necessarily it doesn't set your soul on fire all right so we're being led to go where our soul is being lit up all right uh with this revolutionary energy where's that card at oh man i put it back in whatever but yeah that revolutionary energy all right we're being led to things that really just it becomes it's like this blazing fire so much passion there we go we're being led to our passion things that make us passionate taking a step towards that so with that being said for the people who if you are in a situation you might um realize what passion feels like for the first time in a while okay some of you guys you know if you are not in a situation um then yeah i mean either way i feel like everybody's gonna have this taste of oh this is what love is supposed to feel like this is what passion is supposed to feel like even if it is fleeting okay so i don't want to get i don't i want to make sure that we're not getting too attached to the person who's bringing that emotion but it is something about feeling that it can even be um watching tv watching a rom-com or something like that and it triggers this new passion this new desire like i want that you know you start looking at your passion in a new way um so this could change standards ultimately this could change standards it can change what you um what you're looking for um and it might see back to this risky curiosity energy i feel like the things that we might have said that we wanted at a certain point we might realize we don't want that that might have been the safe answer and now it's just like if you're following your passion what does that answer look like what is your passion what does your love life look like when you're not afraid of what people say what does your love life look like when you're not afraid of other people's opinions of your choice in love uh what does your love life look like when you're just being free, when you're being yourself, they're being themselves and you're being yourselves together. What is this unbridled passion? What does that look like for you? That's what, be, what, what we should be reflecting on. I feel like we might see evidence of that or breadcrumbs towards that because once again, it's breadcrumbs that's piquing our, our curiosity. So you might see, you might meet someone who has one aspect of that thing that uh, triggers this idea of like, hmm, that would be cool if I had a spouse like that, but they won't be the person. And then you might meet someone else or you might see something on TV and you're like, huh, imagine being with someone like that. The curiosity starts to flow. All right, so that's what I'm getting there. Follow those breadcrumbs. Just take note of those breadcrumbs, the things that start to jump out at you and make you look at things differently or question things, question what you thought you liked or what you thought you didn't like, so on and so forth. Um, this week, I, I cooked with mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms, you know? But I cooked it in a way where I'm like, huh, I can get down with mushrooms. Now I have a new thing, a new taste. You know, it's just like, okay, you know, be open. The reason why I got the mushrooms, I went, I went to the store and it was on sale. And I'm like, eh, you know what, let me just, the more the merrier when it comes to the nutrients, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, it's cheap. I don't like it, um, but at least because I'm not spending too much money, I won't regret it. I can throw it away if I don't like it or whatever, right? So that was what led to, ah, screw it. Let me take that risk. Let me buy the, the, the container of mushrooms. Ah, let's see. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what I can do with the mushrooms in this dish. And then next thing you know, I like it. I like it. It worked out pretty well, okay? Oh, okay. All right, now. These cards be flipping up my goddamn hand now. Cool. Uh, so what happens with what you thought was the norm, what you thought was natural for you, no longer becomes that. It's a new normal. There we go. New normal. All right. What's the career? What's going on with the career? Five of Pentacles coming through. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 
All right, so with this new normal that's starting to come in, it it's like, okay, new normal coming in, new likes, new dislikes. How does that apply to my career? Hmm, I can see how that applies to love. How does that apply to the career? Same rules apply. Um, allow for the breadcrumbs to come in, okay? Um, it does seem like while it's a bit more freer to be curious when it comes to meeting people and oh let me go to dinner with this person they're, they're not usually my type but uh who knows it's easier and it's less risky to experiment in that way as opposed to when it comes to the money right so i'm getting some of that some heaviness surrounding being as experimental when it comes to the career because you know what i'm saying bills bills you know what i'm saying bills gotta get paid it's like i ain't got time to be experimenting jumping left and right now i'm out here looking like a job jumper you know what i'm saying i need to you know what i'm saying settle in um so it does seem like there's resistance when it comes to having this level of childlike exuberance and curiosity when it comes to our money <laughs> look okay that is a <laughs> capricorns i get it okay i get it um we're being led to not do that because it's going to cause us to miss out. Now, this is not talk about jumping ship from your daggone job. You know, I, I will not, the Capricorn would not allow me to say anything like that ever. Okay. Um, but what I will say is at least dabble. Maybe take on, maybe take on a hobby, right? That you can do in your free time. Maybe a part-time job um that you might be interested in i don't know how that would work if that's if you get curious about a specific industry you know whatever the case is okay do this other job on the side you know but whatever the case is is to uh okay another way that is coming through is um building up skills by certification schools stuff like that so some of us might be thinking about that now because of that because of this new curious energy coming through yeah don't be afraid to do that all right cool awesome all right let's see what uh what's overall energy what's overall message here overall message for us for the Scorpio 1244 44 has been on my behind today oh oh all right so we have the wheel of fortune coming through then we got the judgment card coming out at the bottom of the mother as a deck okay I like seeing this energy this got me hyped okay it's about that mm -hmm. all right <sighs> Wheel of Fortune. We know what time it is, okay? That Wheel of Fortune, you know what that thing is? You know what it's hitting for? We talking about upgrades up in this motherfucker, okay? We bringing the upgrades. It's time. Judgment card, it's time. All right, some of you guys, you might just step up and say, look, it's time to make a change. I'm done, okay? I'm changing the career. It's over, all right? I'm making a decision. But it feels like we're collectively doing this. We're all saying, Man, fuck that. I'm going for the passion. Okay? It's always a choice. Obviously. Not everyone's going to take it. Ah, ah, blah, blah, blah. We already know. All right. But, um, yeah. We're all feeling the nudge, though. That's the thing. We're all feeling the nudge to say, man, it's time for my passion. Now, there was um, a collective reading that I did prior to this where I was saying that I was saying that we're going to all see where that end goal is. Um, and we have to keep our eyes on the prize. You know, it's like getting a quick vision of where the direction is and then kind of forgetting about it. It gets phasey. It gets hazy. Um, and then you have to just follow the breadcrumbs. Um, and then this is coming up as an aftermath. Like once that vision shows itself and then it gets hazy. The, the impression of that is still alive, even if you can't see the direction of it, if that makes sense. I think I compared it to when you have a dream and you wake up from the dream, you don't 
remember sometimes if sometimes you might not remember the dream but you can feel like huh that was an important dream right you feel the impression of the energy even if you don't really remember what the energy was right that's what's happening here so there's a moment where we get this impression of where we need to go and we might forget but sub but in our subconscious it's still the roadmap is still there all right and we have to just follow the inklings follow the breadcrumbs following it back to ourselves all right so the judgment card is at the bottom oh no will of fortune's out the judgment card is at the bottom of the deck we were in this space, Ten of Swords. When we receive this vision, when we receive this impression, we're in this Ten of Swords energy. We're feeling locked up. Some of us, you know what's, what's funny is that this um, Ayala Van Zandt video is like circulating right now. It's going viral where she's saying, oh, it just don't hurt bad enough right some people don't don't like that idea that concept or whatever the case is and some people like i get it i want to know it's like i get it you know now obviously there are some moments where you do feel stuck in a situation you really can't get out obviously and we're not talking about those we're talking about the times where we're in situations where our thinking um or our belief system or whatever the case is, keeps us trapped in a loop, it keeps us trapped in a cycle, and we're being pushed. Now we're being pushed to get out of it. Um, we're being pushed to get out of it. While we're in this cycle, though, the reason why we keep looping in a cycle is because it does not is not uncomfortable enough. It doesn't hurt bad enough. We don't see an alternative neither. So while we're in this box, in our own, whatever our drama, whatever our issue is, okay, whatever our situation is, this could represent a job that you don't like. This could represent a home environment you don't like. This could represent a, a school that you don't like. Um, whatever, career path, whatever the case is, a relationship, obviously, family, friends, lovers. Um, this can represent, these are just things that feel oppressive in our lives. Look how painful that thing looks. It's not fun. This Ten of Swords energy is all about ending this painful cycle. Why keep yourself trapped in this type of loop? It's because it doesn't really feel like this because we get used to the dysfunction. All right, so then, and then we don't know anything outside of this. This is a life we lived. We don't know any better. And then we get this inkling that shows us, hey, there's something better than this. If you didn't know, look over there. You get that impression, you kind of lose the vision, but now something changed. You're still in this situation. You're still trapped into this box, but something changed. Something starts to glow and light up in your heart while in this space. And now because your heart is lit up, this space starts to look very, it starts to feel as uncomfortable as it looks. And you start wanting more. Are you going to go for more? That's the question. Enough. Yes. The answer is yes. You won't go for more. Monkey. You won't go for more. Okay. Will of Fortune energy, baby. We out here. Let's get it. All right. Oh, gosh. All these swords. All these swords. Three of swords coming through in reverse. In reverse, okay? And that's coming out in the past energy because we dropping it. That's what's happening. We're realizing this energy and how heartbreaking it is, how gut-wrenching it is, or whatever. How being in this situation is more painful than the fear of leaving your comfort zone. Because it was the opposite before. The fear of leaving the comfort zone was stronger than the pain of the situation, the pain of the dysfunction, the pain of the dis dis discomfort. And then it's about to flip. And then we're being led to just rock it out. Start pulling these swords out one by one. Pulling out the swords one by one. Why did I think this was okay? Another sword. Oh, it's because of this one time. Oh, it's because of whatever. Oh, and this is how it affected me in other ways. One by one, just pulling out the sword and freeing yourself from these, um, from the whatever environment, the toxicity or the unhealthiness that we've been accustomed to. 
essentially breaking our hearts over and over again because we kept ourselves in this situation. Okay. I'm really driving the point home. Okay. Um, because accountability is the name of the game here. Accountability is the name of the game. You might not have created this box with all these swords. Someone else might have been putting these swords in there. Someone else might have put you in this box and shut it, cut, uh, shut it closed. But you can push the swords out. You can take the screws, unscrew it, and push open the lid and get out of this box. You can. You staying in this box is what you have to hold yourself accountable for. People throwing swords in there, you can't say anything about that. You can't do nothing about how people are treating you. But if you allow yourself to be treated that way, if you allow yourself to stay in that box, then that's on you, right? That's where we hold ourselves accountable. All right, cool. I feel like I'm preaching. Ace of, Ace of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles, whoa. Three of Wands. I don't like this Five of Pentacles. I don't like this Five of Pentacles, Sam I am. Okay, Three of Wands in reverse and the Empress card in reverse. Eight of Wands in reverse and the Three of Cups. All right, look. Let's talk about this card again, okay? Because let me tell you something. What I'm getting here with this Five of Pentacles, look, okay? This Five of Pentacles is coming through like, I don't want to leave this. I don't want to lose out on this. These swords became my friend. This this box that I became that I was in, it became my little cocoon. It's comfortable. I don't want to lose my comfort. I don't want to lose these thoughts. I don't want to lose these belief systems. I don't want to lose the people who threw those swords in there. Whew. All right. So, this is something to have Five of Pentacles energy about. This is something that you want to miss. You, I mean, you want to miss out on this is something that you want to lose because this ain't it okay uh yeah it just comes through as um possibly part of us it's just the ego fighting back that's all it is it's the ego fighting back arguing for its limitations, arguing for the comfort zone, so on and so forth. And we got to say, fuck out of here. Okay, we out. This is a tough, this is tough. This is going to be a tough one to uh, overcome. I feel that because it, it, it comes with, it's so complex. It's so complex here because it's like, I know this is no good for me. I know this is no good for me, but why am I afraid to lose it? Why am I afraid to lose it? And I mean, emotions are complicated. They're so layered and don't try to make sense of all the complexities of it. Just all these things could be true. You can be afraid to lose your comfort zone even when your comfort zone is dysfunctional because it became your normal. And having a new normal and having change is scary. It just that's just it. It's just fear. It's a fear of change. That's it. Don't beat yourself up about this. Feel the fear and do it anyway, though. Okay. Don't give yourself too much grace about wanting to stay here. Feel, feel the fear and start pushing these swords out this goddamn box. Okay. And then get yourself out this goddamn box. Okay. All right. Don't get stagnant. Um, this situation or this energy, we've been, we've already been kind of stagnant in this, in this belief system or whatever this is. All right. It's going to imply the different things for everybody. This doesn't mean that this is um, your entire life, right? You could be free in the love sector and be like this in a career or vice versa. You can be like this in the, 
in a love sector. The love life could be feeling like a box. You boxed in, oh my gosh, and your career could be flourishing, right? So it's, it just depends. You figure out where you are here. What makes you feel stifled? Where are you feeling the breadcrumbs to take risk and be more curious and try new things? You have the hangman coming out. Yeah, the new perspective is a heart. Imagine this person, their heart was dark and cold, and now, now their heart is glowing. Imagine this person, their heart is glowing now. That's what's happening. And now it's like, oh, fuck, I know I have to make a decision now. I know I got to make a decision. Um, there might have been a little bit of denial as to making a decision, uh, making a judgment call on a specific situation, person, place, or thing. All right. But now it's becoming abundantly clear, like, ah, all right. This is, this is a box and these are swords and this is not good for me. I accept it now. Okay. If you say so, toxic, I get it. You know, we, we, <laughs> that's what we're getting into. We're finally coming to terms with it, which is cool. All right. So we have the queen of cups coming through with the hierophant. It's lovely. This energy, it feels lovely. Um, this can this can be guidance. Definitely guidance. Um, some of you guys, if you're in touch with that, with that other side, um, you definitely have some. I think some uh, definitely guides. Okay, spiritual guides. It could be new ones coming in, and I feel like. Obviously, this is a masculine and feminine. I do feel like they're coming through as a pair, okay? Um, for some reason, I'm getting very um, grand, grandparent energy here, all right? Um, elders. It's some spiritual elders for some of you guys that are going to lead you. They're going to lead you out of pulling the swords out. Follow the breadcrumbs. They're going to be responsible for you, um, helping you to identify where the swords are that you have to pull out so you can free yourself. It's like giving you, it's um, unlocking the code, unlocking the code to get out of the situation, unlocking the code to finally get out of this loop. This feels like a pair. It's giving me chills. Hold on. Hold on. What else? I, I want to say like this is this is us but no it feels like it's an external energy um that's gonna meet you outside of this box they're like whispering they're whispering instructions while we're in this box like hey hey I know you can't really see but turn your head to the right Put your, put your hand up 45 degrees this to the left, whatever, right? Um, but they're given directions. Follow the directions. Follow your dreams. Follow the signs. The signs are going to become clearer or louder um, in this cycle, in this full moon cycle. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's helping us see in the dark. They're going to help us see in the dark. I just want to know more. I want to know more about this character, these characters. It's so interesting that they're coming in pairs. So much support. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just wanting to come in. It's just so much support. Some of you guys, this can be, um, you know, people on earth, right? Um, it can be an older couple. Like, it's something, it really feels like a pair, all right? A pair of elders that are coming in and, like, kind of making this situation a little bit easier for you. It doesn't have to be a couple, but it, I don't know. This is just very intriguing. I, I 
want to dig more into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we are with that two energy again. It's, you know what it is. Um, it just feels like a cheat code moment. Like you, you, you're playing a game and you, and they ask like, do you want a hint? I don't know. If you play free cell or solitaire, I think they ask you if you want a hint. And you say, yeah, I want the hint. And then these, these characters come in and they're like, okay, well, here's your hands. Okay. Um, this could come through. I keep wanting to make it general I, because saying that everyone's going to have grandparent energy come in. I, I, it just sounds like weird to me, but I guess it could come through in so many ways where it can actually be your grandparents or it can be, uh, you know, on earth or on the other side, or it can be just, you know, a grandparent type of energy um, or actual spirit, spirit guides, angels, whatever the case is, it does feel like earthly beings, whether they are on this plane or on the other side. Um, it's just so exciting and it just feels so, feels like warm baked cookies. It feels really good. I, anyway, so this is what your support feels like. So when you're getting this support, when you're getting these breadcrumbs, when you're having these moments of curiosity, is it them? Oh. oh, so much love, so much love, so much love. Here we are with the Queen of Cups coming out of verse with the moon card and a double card coming through. It's because we're in a dark we, we can't see a goddamn thing. This, whatever this situation is, um, why can't I hold these cards up now? Whatever this situation is that became this toxicity that became our normal, it skewed up our inner compass when it came to whatever this is related to. And because it's like almost becoming blind to it. It doesn't matter what your intuitive level is. This is a blind spot. Okay, this doesn't apply to everything in your life. It's your particular blind spot. Your toxic little blind spot there that you were blinded to with that moon card. It was hidden um, and it's becoming aware like this is one, your blind spot. And also, it's more toxic than you think and you're stuck. <laughs> you're stuck and you're looping there. So let us help you allow yourself to be helped. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. I need. Okay. Allow yourself to be helped. Okay. Some of you guys, you might. Okay. Now I'm getting a little bit of stubborn energy. Do not be stubborn. This beautiful ass energy coming on in trying to help you. Because mm. uh, clearly, if you in this energy with this and a queen of cups in reverse, that means you ain't seeing this thing clearly. Okay. Whatever this is, we ain't seeing this thing clearly. We're not seeing the devil in the energy. Okay, and so some divine energy, divine help, divine guidance is coming in like, hey, instruction time. Please listen to us. Please listen. All right. They're going to be heavier than usual. Your guides are just going to be louder than usual. They're going to be heavier than usual. Okay. The number, as I, as I was talking about earlier, like the number's been on my ass. Okay, right. Um, so whether it's numbers coming through, dreams, whatever the case is, follow the breadcrumbs. Follow the synchronicity. You don't have to follow the synchronicities. I'm going to pull back on that um, because I can send you on a wild goose tra chase and that's not, doesn't necessarily take you down the best path, right? It can go down a rabbit hole. So we're not going to follow anything, but just notice the synchronicities, notice the signs and just say thank you. Okay. Um, now, if you do have things that pique your interest, go for those, right? All right. Please trust. Please do not deny this divine assistance. This is, you're about to get, we're about to get cheat codes up in here, okay? A much needed one for a struggle area. Page of Swords coming through in reverse here. There we go. That's stubborn energy, man. Don't do it. Two of Pentacles coming out with the Knight of Cups. Two of Pentacles coming out upright. Knight of Cups in reverse. I'm, I'm getting a stubborn energy. I'm getting a little bit of resistance to this help. This very, this energy is coming through very, mm, 
This energy is coming through so helpful and so divine and so warm and so loving. It's like your grandparents' prayers, you know? That's what it feels like. It feels like that level of just pure-hearted intentions, okay? Um, yeah. But because if we're in this energy when it happens it might get misconstrued we might want to push it back we might not want to we might not be in the mood for all this divine talk they talking right i ain't in the mood for seeing i don't want to see no numbers god damn it i'm just trying to get through this this shit here and they're like okay we'll just take a take a take a breather and if you listen to us, you'll see we're trying to help you get out of this situation. Um, but then it comes with that other layer of maybe I don't want to get out this situation because it's my comfort zone. What's outside this box? And they're like, hey, let me show you what's outside this box. You know, some of you guys, this is just overall, this can be a spiritual awakening. Some of you guys, this is um, a new level of a spiritual ascension. Uh, a new level that you're stepping into. There, it doesn't matter what level you are you're at. Uh, I I want to keep saying that because no one is exempt from this energy. Everyone has a blind spot. Everyone has a blind spot. Okay, so we're all being led to work through that, and I think. Mm, okay, this is why I had to say it because I feel like with certain people uh if you are very intuitive you might have some resistance to this because you're like well i'm super intuitive like there's no way i'm gonna miss this yes yes you missed it this is your blind spot It doesn't take away, I don't know why I want to why I want to go into this. It doesn't take away from your um your intuitive senses. It doesn't take away from that. It's just saying psychologically you only know one thing. So we're gonna have a blind spot if you live you only lived in your life, you only lived in your body. You are a walking blind spot because you don't know anything else outside of your life. So that's just what it is. You only know your life. So everything is going to be anything out. You, your life is a blind spot, if that makes sense. All right. All right. So anyway, ultimately, we're being led to step outside the box, step out of who we are. Right. Um, take let, let the curiosity just run. Have fun with that. Please do not go back. See, the thing about rejecting this divine assistance that is instructions and um, breadcrumbs into a new beginning, into a new us, the thing about rejecting that is it puts, it keeps us here. And there's a need to, one, recognize what this here looks like and how dysfunctional and toxic it is before you have the, the desire to even try something new, right? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know you're in a fog until the fog clears. If all you knew was living in the world and all you knew was fog, you wouldn't know what sunshine is. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't be able to even fathom the, the concept of sunshine if all you knew, if you lived in a world where all it was was fog. And then someone comes along and says, hey, did you know that there's something called a sun? Yeah, this bright light where you could see everything. You could see clearer. You're like, oh, that sounds stupid. I'm used to fog. I'm used to only seeing what's right here in front of my face. So you're saying if the sun is out and the fog, the, the fog is clear, I can see miles down the road? That sounds wild. That's what's happening. This box is our fog. And we can't see beyond our own perceptions. We can't see beyond our own belief systems. We can't see beyond our own childhood, our own upbringings, being raised in whatever body you were raised in, whatever environment you were raised in, whatever gender you were raised in, whatever the case is, you can only see from your point of view. 
And we have to understand that. And that one, it helps us to be compassionate when it comes to other people and be more empathetic when it comes to other people. But also it helps you realize like, oh, hold on. There's another way to do this thing. Okay. The only reason why I think I need to move like this in the world is because of my one, my one-sided experience. My biased experience. And it's going to be biased towards me because that's it. I'm not living in anybody else's body. Think like that and it'll help you to, uh, to get outside the box here and realize that there's another way to move in this world. Another way that you could move in this world. Think about ways, what if you were, what if you did live in a world where it, was, it wasn't it was fog? Um, imagine, oh man, what if I was in a world where it was, it was just rainbows surrounding me all the time? Hmm, what would that world look like? How would I be then? Imagine that, right? Imagine different realities where you would have been a certain other thing if, or if you were born in this certain other area or if you were born in the other, cir other circumstances. It, it lets you, it opens your mind up to how your circumstances, how everything has molded you to be who you are right now and how it's created this mindset that created this blockage in whatever aspect of your life. See yourself out of it. Imagine another reality and then jump on over to that thing. <laughs> Easier said than done. But you get what I'm saying. Let your imagination lead the way. Let your curiosity lead the way. That might be a good exercise for this full moon. Um, imagining another world, another reality. What do you think your other world will look like? You looking like yourself? But an, imagine a different up, uh, a different upbringing. Imagine a different country. Whatever the case is, all right. Where you would, where this would not be the reality. Imagine that. And because there's a need to imagine that to know that it's possible. And to realize that this is just one way of doing this life thing for yourself. Also realizing that just because you had you were you had whatever this because you had whatever experiences these were that created this belief system and created this box and created this whole matrix for yourself, it doesn't mean that you have to stay there. It's it's the mat the the um it's something about holding yourself accountable that's gonna cause this empowerment here, ultimately. Okay. But you first have to believe that you can. You have the power to do it. You have the power to take these swords out. You have the power to change your belief. You have the power to be whoever you want to be. All right? All right, cool. I'm done preaching. I'm done. I'm done. All right, let me pull from the animal spirit deck. Then we out of here. Okay. Oh. oh. Skunk spirit, know your worth. And seahorse spirit, watch and wait. This excites me all the time because this is such a beautiful, like surprising card. Um, watch and wait, like mm, you don't even know what's about to happen next. Like if you just continue to be curious, con continue to be open-minded, uh, continue to step outside of your comfort zone, step out of your mind, step out of what you think you should be based on how things have always been, based on how what people told you you should be, based on your upbringing, based on what you've seen, just because you, you've seen certain things. Just because you've seen things being done in a certain way doesn't mean that that's how it has to be. Be the rule breaker. Be the generation breaker. Be the earth shaker. Be the... Ugh, all right. But yeah, I got too excited. But you you, you get what I'm saying here? Um, open up. Open up. Open up to new possibilities here of what you think is possible for you, ultimately. And if you do that, if you allow yourself have the audacity to dream if you allow yourself to be bold enough to fucking dream and see yourself outside of who you are right now watch what happens watch what happens okay that's what i'm getting here if you have the audacity to know your fucking worth watch what happens all right that's what i'm getting here so watch your words with the pirate spirit coming through here. Watch your words. Watch how you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself nice. All right. 
and <laughs> well spirit trust a great mystery all right uh yeah this is that energy this beautiful surprising energy with watch and wait trust the mystery okay uh, just allow yourself to flow in this journey of curiosity it, it, it can this can start this new chapter of you just flowing and allowing for the curiosity to take you wherever it's not just ending with this one full moon cycle it will continue you'll continue to get these breadcrumbs and just make this your new way of being this new philosophy of just flowing with life all right that's what i'm getting here this is beautiful i love it oh this is exciting i love this energy oh look at that dream the world into being oh i love this energy yay okay all right so the um the biggest takeaway what's the biggest takeaway be curious take the breadcrumbs step into yourself step out of your old self get the get the fuck about this energy because it's over for that and follow your blessings follow your divine guidance follow your higher self your higher self is leading leading you to them that's what's happening all right well beautiful energy wishing you the very best okay all right until we meet again thank you for um uh watching feel free to like subscribe share comment i mean ig taryn hill if you want a personal reading check out the info box below if you want to be an angel donor check out the the patreon link below add me on the twitters Add me on the TikToks and IG. I already said that. All right. Thank you. Till we meet again. Peace.